to do how's it going out there so as you can probably see by the title um, this one has become a bit of an impromptu one one that I've wanted to do for a while but I've held off doing for a while anyway morning good afternoon good evening wherever the fluff you are yeah so the reports that NRL are looking to buy in to um, the RFL, Super League, Championship, League One, European, um, you know, rugby, whatever you want to um, call our setup with everything. Um, now, on the outside, it does look like that would be a good idea, but, but, it also comes with a bit of sourage as well, and I'm going to keep calling sourage. Um, mostly because, well, NRL people in the past have called Super League and the British or European League or whatever um, a second rate competition, and that, you know, it's not worth a penny. So. The question there is, if it is a second-rate service, why would they be interested in buying into it? Because I've got my own theories on that, and I'm going to cover those in a in a little uh, in a little while. Hopefully, I don't ramble on too long. Now, there are some positives with it, which I'm going to go through. The positives, yes, they would probably be able to help manage it and sort it all out, help the teams with like sponsorships and a load of other stuff and more marketing and social media and everything else, especially with the branding, because, well, NRL over in Australia is freaking huge. You know, Rugby League over here is quite low down the packing order with the major sports that we have in this country. So there would be a few other reasons behind it, which I'll cover shortly. Uh, but... From some of their know-how of how to, you know, like how to market things and a lot of other stuff, they would probably be able to help it further along the line. But what I will cover may prove otherwise, especially with like you know the branding and a lot of the other stuff and being able to get the TV deals and some of the other bits and pieces. Yeah, that would be a good side. Now, this video is going to be quite heavily tainted on the dark end and more on the negative of what I personally think from what I've read over the past few years and a lot of other stuff. Uh, so let's just jump straight into that and then basically you guys can um, say what you want down below. So my personal thoughts on the reasoning behind this. Now, one of the major things that they have said that they would be aiming to do is to move it's from the summer league to a winter league so it's kind of you know so that you've got round the clock rugby but in this country that wouldn't work especially when you've got um you know absolute freezing cold and some of the pitches that we would be using would be sheet ice so that wouldn't work Another one is the weather. The weather is not conducive to being able to do that. I know they do it in Union, but a lot of their um, stadiums aren't wide open fields like some of the ones in League. Especially when you get down to some of the lower League where there is basically um, a bowl in a former quarry and you just slap some concrete on it. I'm not going to say where, but um, everyone knows where that is. What's <sighs> up? But yes, um, especially with a lot of the other stuff, plus them fighting against football or for those of you who are from overseas, soccer, um, you know, because some teams do share with football. So having it the season at the same time as them is going to be very difficult with getting everything working. Also, then some, some teams also share with Union. So that would be also the problem with fighting against Union for the usage of the ground as well. So there is that problem. Also, um, if they did move it to a winter league so that it would be a winter league like over in Australia, their winter is our summer.
So I think you can see where part of this one comes from. Our league, or our version of NRL, as it would probably be known as you know, NRL Europe or something, um, would be a warm-up for, as some people in NRL Australia or N NRL head office have said, theirs would our league would be the warm-up league and theirs would be the proper league. And then once theirs has ended and ours has kicked up again, some of the players that were on the fringes or coming back from injuries could be brought into our league again to then finish off theirs so that they can rehab. I don't like that at all. A lot of the other things as well is. Um, so the salary cap that we've got here is reportedly about three times lower than what it is in Australia. So the Australians would still be able to keep all of their superstars, but we wouldn't. Another reason would be so that they can take all of the superstars out of our league and put them in the Australian league. So that Australian league is always the greatest and always the best. This is some of the hidden agendas which I'm thinking are in here, along with stifling England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, a lot of the European nations, so that we cannot be any threat to the Australian team in the national stakes, so that all of it is just Australia, Australia, Australia. They win everything, they dominate everything, and that they will always have their foot at our throat. That is basically how it seems, especially with some of the things that, you know, like, you know, no promotion and no relegation. So everyone would have to be there. There would be teams that are permanently up there. So you would have a situation like in the NFL where a team could absolutely stink the place out for three or four seasons in a row. Never improve and they would just be the constant whipping boys. There would be no up or down. So always the top teams would be forever the top teams and the bad teams would be forever the bad teams unless they were to miraculously hunt upon a hidden gem and manage to get themselves up and then find a way of somehow fluttering in some of these better players and then they rise up and then it's just a bit of a fight. I don't like that idea at all. I've always been for promotion and relegation because it means that a team that has managed to build up one heck of a team can get up there and then mix it with the big boys and get their names out there and be in the pot. Having it where it's just like, you know, Super League, Super League or NRL, basically NRL Elite, NRL Diet, whatever you want to call it, basically the second level. It doesn't work very well at all in my head because you're basically just telling the fat cats and the big boys oh yeah sorry you're it's okay it doesn't matter how how bad you are you're forever going to be up here so it means then that teams will just not bother so when you've got a team that has been at the bottom and hardly won anything and is constantly getting absolutely annihilated season after season you know it's going to happen again. So there's no point in that team being there. So you might as well kick them out and bring up whoever's dominating the lower one. That's why promotion and relegation works. It also means that you can get the surprise package. Like Lee last season. A lot of people wrote them off as that they were just going to be at the bottom half and that they wouldn't do anything and what well, they won a challenge cup and they were in the playoffs so yeah so them doing that is basically what you won't get your fairy tales like that you won't ever see a historic name like fev coming up coming up because they're going to be forever pinned to the lower leagues which stinks totally stinks that's just the way it is. It's the same with 
making sure that they can dominate on the money. Because, as I alluded to a little bit earlier, rugby league in this country isn't a massive draw. So it means then that you're not going to have a bidding war en masse to get the games on TV. You know, you're, you're, go you're just going to get the same old, same old. Yeah, you might get an increased money deal from Sky or, you know, from BT or TNT as they're now called or whatever. You know, you might get one of those in there, but it won't be what people are expecting. People are just expecting it to go from a deal of, you know, 20 million, 30 million to 100 million. It ain't going to happen. It's never going to happen like that. Teams aren't just going to be all of a sudden under this new branding. Absolutely flush with money. It won't work. It ain't going to happen. You know. As many times as I want to flip my lucky quarter. And say that that would happen. That one day. You know. A TV station is going to go on there and just go. I know. Since the rights to, to rugby league in, in Britain are going, going off at the moment, why don't we stick a ridiculous bid in there of, for, of, for instance, plucking it again out, out, out of thin air, 100 million. Un guaranteed 100 million per season for five seasons. It will never happen. I really doubt that there is any future with that idea of NRL being the saviour of rugby league in this country. Because it's got more negatives than it's got positives. There's some positives where they would be able to help with the marketing and the branding and all of that stuff. But... All of the other stuff, it's all massively outweighed by all the negatives. By a lot of the stuff, because they have forever classified our leagues as being the inferior product. And the place where you would go to retire, or the place where you would go as a kid to be polished. And then you would then go back to Australia to then do your forever years, where you would then be a great and then if you wanted to come back and grace, grace the Super League with your presence, you would come back for a final year and just give it all a full farewell because you can't do it again out in Oz. So you would come over here to just give it one last hurrah. It's just not going to work because we wouldn't have any of the superstars. We wouldn't have the likes of a Bevan French. We wouldn't have Brody Croft. <laughs> as much as I hate to say it, Saints, you wouldn't have your golden boy. He would have been snapped up and gone. If NRL were running it, he would have been gone the moment that he showed any, any talent. He would have been snapped up on a fat cat deal out there and chucked into the league. And then sent back just to polish up here a little bit and then ship back. It wouldn't work. No matter how many times I'm going to keep saying it wouldn't work. But to drum it in, it will not work. And this is from the fans. There's many, many fans out there that are eating it up and saying that it is going to be the greatest thing in the saviours. I don't believe so, and quite a few others don't believe so. So, anyone from the RFL and NRL that gets to see this, please work it out in your head and put out a statement that you are not going to do what some and I theorise is the true motivation behind that deal. I know it's not a done deal, it is still rumours, but rumours have a very big habit of becoming an ironclad signed deal overnight, especially when rumours have been going on for nigh on four damn years. 
Rumours have been going on since pri pr pr since pre COVID. There was rumours rolling around in the early, you know, in the early twenty tens. There was rumours floating around in the nineties that some of the greats in this country could be permanently locked to Australian deals to stop the domination of our players and our talent and our teams. Because there are some people on both sides of the divide that do get a little bit sore about Australia not being the number one forever. Now, yes, I am going to cover this briefly about, yes, the clapper. And yes, I do have pamphlets on the other side. That is the, the one that I didn't beat the ever-living crap out of on the game. But, yes, I'm admitting we got lucky with those calls. We got lucky. Whether the ball was down or not is now totally moot. We've had... Shoddy refereeing in Super League for quite some time. We're used to it. We got over it. There's controversial calls all over the damn place. That's how it works in our league, unfortunately. We just have to deal with it, even if we're not happy. We don't complain. We just swallow it and get on. Because there's nothing we can do to change it. We can't just walk into the refing office and scream, rant and shout and slam a piece of paper down that says you must sign this affidavit to say that you will ref this blah 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 Because every single ref has their own ideas and their own version of how to ref. That is that. They will do it to the law but they will still ref with their own personality. Whether or not that ref was born in Town A, Town B or Town C and then lives in Town A, Town B or Town C. It doesn't matter. You could have had a ref that was from America or Canada or India and chucked them in there and they still may or may not have made a controversial call that could or could not have influenced how the game went. So can we have an end to that banter and that argument and all of that rah, rah, rah? Because that is also getting quite old. So I'm going to cover that last bit up and done. Okay, so. I think that the NRL buying into Super League or buying it out, all out, outright is... <clears throat> I do believe that it is a fat negative overall. That... Us on this side of the divide are going to suffer. Our teams are going to suffer. Our fans are going to suffer. The players are going to suffer unless they get a fat cat deal and go to Australia. Okay? So, goodbye. <laughs>